Uh, this is free response question number three, part C. It says find the x coordinate of each point at which the graph of G has a horizontal tangent line. For each of these points, determine whether G has a relative max minimum, relative maximum, or neither a minimum nor a maximum. Now what we're up against on this question is again the distinction between the fact that they are asking us questions about G, which is the integral of F, but our graph is of F, not G. So I need to determine and understand what the relationship between F and G is. And that's the whole crux of this problem. What relationship are they describing here between F and G? What we determined in part B of this question is that since G of X is defined as the integral from one to X of F of T dt, therefore by the first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus, G prime of X is just equal to f of x. Now, this is the relationship the, and, and the connection between these two relationships. This is what this question is about us understanding. So our questions are about g, and it's asking about relative min, relative max, etc. But our graph is of f. Now, if we understand that f is g prime, then we can go back to our function and say that this f is g prime. Now we can use all our tools that we have that allow us to find the relationship between the graph of G prime and the graph of G. So here's our graph of G prime, all uh, line segments and curves. So we're first asked uh, where the horizontal tangent lines are. So we need to know, looking at a graph of G prime, we need to know where G has a horizontal tangent line. Well, hopefully you remember that uh, if, if G has a horizontal tangent line, then that means the slope of the tangent is zero, and the slope is the derivative. So we're literally looking for where G prime is zero. And this is a graph of G prime. So we're just really going to look on this graph where is g prime equal to zero? We can spot those points right away. They're right here and right here. Um, but also, just to recall where this comes from, we know we have a horizontal line when g prime is equal to zero from this chart. And if you don't have this chart, you might want to um, freeze your frame and see if you can um, download it and use this chart. It's very useful. It gives the relationship between the graph of f, f, f prime, and f double prime. Now what we're looking for is a horizontal tangent, so we can see that f has a horizontal tangent whenever f prime is zero. So if f prime is zero, f has a horizontal tangent. If f has a horizontal tangent, f prime is zero. So that's the first part of this calculus chart of awesomeness that we're going to use. So uh, we're really, that's where our horizontal tangent means g prime equals zero. And now we can really just look at this graph and say the two points where g prime, which they gave to us as f, but we understand that means it's g prime, the two points where it is a zero is at x equals negative one and x equals one. So that's our first thing, is we're going to say that uh, f has a horizontal tangent. Now our question has a lot of parts, so we need to be clear which part we're answering at which time. F has a horizontal tangent at x equals negative one and x equals one. So those are the two points where it has a horizontal tangent, and now we've answered this part. Find the x-coordinate of each point where the graph of G has a horizontal tangent line. We've done that. For each of these points, determine whether G has a relative minimum, relative maximum, or neither. So we need to give two answers. Since we found two points where there's a horizontal tangent, so we need to give two answers as to whether it's a relative minimum, and we need to justify both of those. So we need to split those up and say, at x equals negative one, what happens? And at x equals one, what happens? Now we need to recall um, what, uh, how we're gonna know from looking at the derivative whether we have a relative minimum, relative maximum, or neither. So that's also on our calculus chart of awesomeness. We want to know if we have a, a relative max, and in fact we could have a local or global max, or a local global min. When does that happen? Well, it happens when f prime changes from positive to negative 
we know that's a max if f prime changes from positive to negative. And if f prime changes from negative to positive, then that's a min. And implied, if it doesn't do either of those things, then it's not either one of those things. So what we need to do is look at that uh, g prime and see if it's changing sign from positive to negative, that's a max, negative to positive, that's a min. All right, so let's look at what happens at x equals negative one. So first at x equals negative one, here's x equals negative one, here comes our g prime, it's positive, 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 and then it changes to negative. So it changes from positive to negative right there. That's our g prime changing from positive to negative. So since g prime changed from positive to negative, that means that x equals negative one, f has a relative maximum. Now, we have to be careful to say f has a relative maximum. We cannot say it has a relative maximum. We cannot say the function has a relative maximum because, in fact, what I wrote here is wrong. g has a relative maximum. It's g whose derivative is recorded here. So, and they'll be looking to see whether we know which function has a relative or max or min. Well, the question was about g. So g has a relative maximum. Uh, not f, not g prime, not g double prime, but g has a relative maximum. Now, we need to justify this, and let's go ahead and justify it right away. Justify your answers. So we're going to justify that g has a relative maximum because g prime changes from positive to negative at x equals negative one. And we're gonna, that's our justify point right there. We're gonna, if we say that, that g prime changes from positive to negative, then we're gonna get that justification point. All right, and then at x equals one, well, let's see what happens at x equals one. Here's, the, here's uh, g prime coming along at x equals one, and it's negative, and then it stays negative. So g prime does not change sign here. Since it does not change sign, g does not have a min or a max, since g prime does not change sign. So, we're going to say at x equals one, g has neither a relative maximum nor a relative minimum. And our justification for that is because g prime does not change sign at x equals one. And now we are done with part C.